What's in the basket? 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 Look, this movie is almost 40 years old, so this shouldn't be news to you, but in case you don't know what's in the basket, I'm about to spoil everything. Told you. Oh dear, hostility. Now that we got that out of the way, hi folks, I'm Greg Burkhart and you are invited to my horror party. We love horror movies for a lot of reasons, but when you get right down to it, you can appreciate horror cinema as art, or you can just have fun with it. Both of those totally valid. But on this show, I'm going to focus on the fun factor. And nothing's more fun than watching a horror movie with your friends, except maybe watching it under the influence of various substances. And of course, whatever substances you choose are entirely up to you. Me, I'm going to mix a little cocktail that fits the vibe of today's movie, which is of course the 1982 Grindhouse classic Basket Case. I'll show you how to mix it yourself, but feel free to pick your own poison, as they say. Just make sure it's a low dose, because this is supposed to be fun, not dangerous. I've also created a game that will hopefully enhance your enjoyment of the movie. Just remember to read that disclaimer I put up at the beginning. This one. All set. Let the festivities commence. It's cracking up the place, man. It's so Why is Basket Case a party movie? Well, to start with, it's completely bonkers with an unmistakably sleazy grindhouse vibe, and of course, it's gushing with gore. Seriously, this is one wet ass movie. <laughs> After I give you this one minute overview of Basket Case, then you can choose your favorite libation. Okay, here I go. One minute, watch the clock. Basket Case is the first feature from cult director Frank Henenlotter, who started with the idea of a monster living in a basket and took it from there. He shot it on 16mm film with a tiny crew, mostly in midtown Manhattan, including the legendary 42nd Street Theater District and an underground S&M club. The budget was just 16 grand when shooting began, so they had to cut corners wherever they could. For example, the lobby of the Hotel Broslin was actually shot in an open freight elevator, and many of the props were fished out of dumpsters. They doubled their budget once they had footage to show investors, but they still ran out of money, and crew members had to double for the ones who left. The crew was so small that many of the names in the credits are actually made up. Despite its humble beginnings, Basket Case became a popular midnight movie, and one theater in Greenwich Village kept it running for nearly two years. No one was more shocked by this than the director, who thought it would fade into obscurity. When Henenlotter asked film critic Rex Reed what he thought of it, he replied, that was the sickest movie I've ever seen. That quote was later used in the promotional materials, and it's even on the VHS box. Oh, yeah, yeah. By pick your poison, I mean beer, wine, or liquor, provided it's legal, and that means no underage drinking, cannabis, again, local laws apply, caffeine, or even super spicy snacks, anything that alters your consciousness in a good way. Here are some basic game rules tailored to today's movie. Feel free to riff on these, make whatever changes you like, but once you set the rules, you gotta stick with them. One dose equals one drink, or one puff, or one bite of your chosen poison, so take a dose whenever a character asks, what's in the basket? What's in the basket, Easter eggs? With one exception, when Dwayne finally answers that question, What's in the basket? My brother. Your brother! <laughs> take two doses. When Belial shows his face for the first time, take two doses. Each time he jumps out of the basket after that, take one dose. When blood is spilled on screen, take one dose. When Sharon says, <coughs> take one dose. Dwayne! Finally, whenever you see male or female nudity, and you'll see both, take one dose um, a piece, I guess. Speaking of doses, here's what I'm consuming for our feature presentation. It's sort of a spicy variation on the popular Halloween shooter called the Brain Hemorrhage. I call it the Brain Damage as a nod to another Frank Henenlotter flick. First, pour a shot of Fireball into a chilled shot glass. It's even better if you chill your shot glasses and the whiskey in the freezer overnight. I'm making mine a double for visual appeal, but I'd strongly advise you start small. 
Take a spoon, flip it upside down over the glass, and very slowly pour the Baileys over the back of the spoon so it makes a big, gross glob right in the middle of the whiskey. Then sprinkle a few drops of grenadine into that glob to make it nice and bloody. It's as fun to make as it is to drink. Actually, it's probably more fun to make. Now it's time for the movie, but be sure to come back here for more aftercare as well as my own final thoughts about Basket Case. But remember, be smart and know your limitations and keep an eye on your friends to make sure they know theirs too. With that said, lights down, glasses up, roll film. While you're enjoying the game, at least I hope you're enjoying it, here are some random thoughts on the whole era this movie represents. If you haven't already figured this out, I am just cuckoo for grindhouse and drive-in horror and exploitation movies. I mean, the real deal, you know, stuff from the 70s and 80s. My generation is probably the last to experience this era firsthand, you know, like actually going to these sketchy theaters when they were still around. But thankfully, some of our fellow fanatics are trying their damnedest to preserve the sickest flicks of that era on digital media. While we can't really duplicate the authentic experience of watching Basket Case in 1982, we can get pretty close and with a slightly lower risk of death. For this screening, I watched Arrow Video's fully loaded Blu-ray, which came out a few years ago, and is still out there for a pretty decent price. I highly recommend it. Oh, and here's a little bonus if you happen to have this particular Blu-ray of Basket Case. Check out the animated short Belial's Dream by Robert Morgan, which he created exclusively for this release. If you think the movie is twisted, wait till you see this thing. Morgan was the perfect choice for this tribute because one of his earlier shorts, The Separation, is also the story of a doomed relationship between former conjoined twins. Basket Case is one of my all-time top ten favorite movies. Even though it's only been ten years, it seems like yesterday that we had the world drive-in premiere yeah. of Basket Case. You remember that? At the Highway 183 yeah. drive-in in Irving, Texas. Like two at, in the morning. At two in the morning. <laughs> about 300 cars showed up for it. And the yeah. world was changed forever. All right, that's enough. Time for a health check. Ah! Are you okay? Just checking. Don't feel bad if you couldn't keep up with the game. What matters is that you had a good time. Me, I had big fun because I just love this crazy little movie. It's cheap, gross, perverted, and hilarious. And that combo hits me right in the fun zone. Maybe I should have worded that differently. <laughs> Did you enjoy my horror party? No, seriously, I mean, if you did, be sure to throw this episode a like. I'm also open to suggestions for our next party flick, so please do hit the comments and let me know. And before you go, be sure to ring the ding ling thing and subscribe to Joe Blow Horror videos for lots more. Bye, folks. Uh.